Welcome to Come Home. I'm Jen Mallon. Thank you for being with me today. I appreciate you. I appreciate your time. And I appreciate that you support Christian television and you support programming like this. If you have a prayer request, we care about that. That's one of the differences between us and a reality show and a sitcom is that we pray over the things that you send in. We have a great prayer team. So please take advantage of that because when two or more are gathered in his name, he is there. And right on the bottom of the screen, you will see where you can send those emails to. You can always do handwritten, a voicemail. We're just so glad that we can connect and communicate together. Well, today I have an incredible voice, Sean Bolt. He was in ministry for over 30 years. Then the Lord said, hey, it's time to go on to and, and the arts and entertainment and Media Mountain. He is being used mightily as a prophetic voice, how to hear the voice of God, many curriculums, many books. But the Lord is using him to do commentaries and, and he has hundreds of millions of downloads of his podcast, of his views. He hits controversial subjects, but with kindness and compassion. And just the love of Jesus exudes out of him. You'll so enjoy our time together, especially in the climate that we're in, this political climate, this pressure global climate with so much going on that could lend to heaviness. He brings hope and healing to our situation and really positions us and spiritually aligns us on how we need to behave and act accordingly as people of light that are filled with the Holy Spirit who walk in God's promises and his principles. So join me now as I bring Sean Bolts on. You'll get so much out of it and I'm so grateful for you. Hi, can I invite you to get a double blessing if you or somebody you know is going through some changes in the workplace and they could use some support in the employment scene, please get this book. And at the same time, you can, with a donation of $10 or more and shipping and handling, bless the Come Home with Jen Mallon show and ministry. Thank you. Well, here we are with Sean Bolts, as I promised. Thank you so much for being with us today. I'm so glad to be here. Finally, finally, right? <laughs> it took us a while to connect, but we got here. Well, God's timing is perfect, and so I'm so grateful. I do want to share with you and with the viewers that during the uh, coronavirus lockdown pandemic, whatever you want to call it, uh, your book Breakthrough was my go-to. And it, it it was truly, we um, did 783 Zoom calls in a row for our wow. local congregation at the time. And so many of those calls, I just had your book right in front of me going through it. And then I got provision and I loaned that to someone and they never gave it back. So I got, I got to reorder I'll that. I'll send again. you a new one. I'll send oh. you a new one. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, your materials, before we just kind of get into the meat, I just want to thank you for the price you've paid, the costly oil you carry, the way that you have trained the body of Christ to hear God's voice, to understand mm -hmm. God's voice. Um, your, and just for the way that you've said yes to the Lord in this new season where he's really transitioned you into marketplace ministry. So now you have a voice in two uh, very influential mountains and you have millions, if not billions of downloads and views. And, and you are, you are, you are being used incredibly. You are in the front of the line and you are stomping the ground and thank you. Well, I didn't know I was going to get words of affirmation like overload right now. This is a, <laughs> I so appreciate it though. No, it's it's good. And and teaching people how to hear from God, it's one of the my favorite things to do, the easiest thing to do. And I grew up around a lot of people who heard from God, but they didn't have the ability to just make it pl pliable or easy for someone else to do it. So it's one of my passions is to see the everyday person who already hears from God really get in touch with how he speaks. So thank you for even bringing that up. I think it's so it's so important. Well, you know, you Sean, you you have such an anointing to make very deep truths very palatable 
and mm-hmm. you present them in a compassionate way and in a kind way and in, in bite-sized pieces. And you even take controversial things um, that sometimes <laughs> not, you know, pulpit ministry sometimes isn't comfortable with and yeah. uh, our current events. And then and you connect us to understanding, to the heart of God. You bring in kindness and compassion. And it's so needed because sometimes the media world can be very um, sharp and harsh and critical and bitey. And that is not the spirit that is on you. And I, I really appreciate that. Well, it takes one to know one. I appreciate that about you too. So that's, it's a great compliment. It's, I think it's God is positioning people like us who um, it's not at the expense of someone loving someone to do media. And I think we're supposed to love first. And I think that's really hard when you're talking about, you know, I'm talking this week about Kamala again, and I'm not a Kamala pro Kamala person as far as the vice president right now for running for president. But there has to be a place inside me that sees God's redemptive plan and sees who she is before she's the fallen one, before she, you know, before any of us are fallen. There's this place of grace where we got to learn to see what God originally dreamed over each other. And, and I think that's how I try and operate. It's not always easy and I don't always succeed, but it's one of the things, one of my passion places is to dream big with God over people's lives before I talk about them. That's good. What a, what a good principle for us all to uh, work on with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> yeah, there's no us and them in the kingdom. It's all, it's all of us together. Everyone who's alive on the planet right now deserves the love and the grace of God. Yeah, that and you know, so often, uh, you know, I, I grew up in that hellfire and brimstone mm-hmm. age, and uh, I really got you know drilled into me the fear of God and ah, oh, and yet this generation does not accept that they they don't swallow it, and really, yeah. it's the goodness of God that is going to lead them to repentance, the undeniable. Yeah. Yeah hope and grace and love doesn't mean we water it down, but it means that we present it. I agree. I agree. I think we used to be defined. The fear of God was being afraid of God. And and I, I have a really good family. You would love my parents. They're so sweet. They've been married. They're going on this week, 63 years. Wow. And my dad just didn't look at women like lustfully besides my mom. He would look at her and it'd almost be embarrassing. I'm like, dad. And he didn't look at, he, he, I never saw him with pornography. I never saw him. And he would say, you know, I'm protecting my relationship with your mom at all costs. So if I do that stuff, then I get less with your mom. I don't, I don't experience the same quality as I experienced with your mom. And to me, the, and he said, that's what the fear of God is. Yeah. If you love the relationship, you're protected at all costs. Yeah. And that, that changed everything for me. I didn't have that religious kind of thing of like, I got to be afraid of you, God. I had this thing of like, I want to be with you. I don't want to, I don't want to do this because I get less of you. I, I want all of you, God. So I think that's, I think this generation is wired for that. It's just saying, I want all or nothing. Yes. And if you have the fear of God, it means you're going to have all of God. You're right. Okay. So Sean, for those that um, have been following you for years or decades, I want you to catch them up with what God's done in your <laughs> life in the last four years. And for those who are like, who is this amazing guy? How come I've never heard of him before? Kind of share what started happening 2019, 2020, and then the platform and and just this influential gift that God's given you for for such a time as this. Well, yeah, I I was happy doing ministry, but always felt called in the entertainment industry. And so I was always working with video games and working with stuff, but doing full-time ministry as well. So I always had a side business, side hustle. And uh, it was really interesting because, you know, all those years I was around people who didn't care about culture. They cared about church culture. They cared about their movement, their church, their apostolic, whatever endeavor, and their Christianity or whatever. And there's a lot of um, movements that were more charismatic, sometimes Pentecostal was involved with. And I, I somehow arrived to a place where I can go almost anywhere and preach almost anywhere in those spaces. They were kind of fringy places, but they were in those spaces. And I love the, I love the crowd I was around. I just really had a love for these groups. And at one point, I remember just feeling like, you know, God doesn't give us a calling to just deploy us just to our family. It's always, it's also outside of our family as well, unless you're called to build just that house, just that family house. And so I moved to LA back in 20, uh, 2006. And I felt like Jesus showed me just real clear word. I'm homeless in Hollywood. Will you build me a home? <laughs> and I'm like, I am not a pastor. God, this is like, I'm a minister. I've trained in Bible schools. I've done all kinds of things, but I'm not a pastor. And I've trained people how to hear God's voice primarily for uh, over a decade and a half at that point. And so I ended up um, starting a church and it was a, kind of a kind of an activation center because I, I had a lot of Fuller Seminary graduates and Biola graduates of theology. And they would teach and they would preach and they would pastor the community with me. 
And I was traveling all the time. And I was just learning a lot about being in a space like Hollywood and Los Angeles, where 30, 50% of our people were in the entertainment industry, about what God's doing in those spaces that look so evil and dark sometimes when you're not there. And just seeing the beauty of people who are studio execs at CBS or NBC or Disney. And so I ended up working a lot uh, in consulting and helping people keep into their compass, their spiritual compass, why they were in these secular roles and places. And a lot of it was just discipleship, friendship, mentorship. And after a good decade of doing that as a senior pastor, I had got married. So my first marriage, my wife, who I'm still with today, love her. Hopefully, when she was my parents, I'll be a really old man in my hundreds. But hopefully, you know. But uh, my my wife and I, re- she was a real catalyst for change for both of us. And yeah. she has a media calling on her life as well. And so she, she just really challenged me. It was like, this is your call to be deployed into the thing that God's put in your heart. You didn't come to L.A. to be a pastor. You, God asked you to be when you got here, but that's not what he asked you to be bound to the rest of your life. And so she and a therapist uh, did a number on me and worked me out of my job. And at that time, I had a really wonderful encounter with God where I just I just got a, a strategy on how to activate people and how to hear God's voice. And, and especially people who don't feel like they hear from God. And I went around the world and deployed that for about seven years. Seven years into it, I'm telling you, I knew I was supposed to go full time in the media, but my board and my friends and my everyone in my life except for Sheree was like, you know, Sean, just take steps into it. Don't go fully into it because it's hard to get into media and it's hard to work in media. And especially you want to do production too, not just hosting. Uh, and you don't want to just do Christian content, you want to do mainstream content. So just go really slow. But then coronavirus happened in 2020. My whole tour that we did as a ministry got canceled which I loved. My team was like, are you okay? Friends were like, are you okay? I'm like, this is the best day of my life. And I just went, you know, I had already been doing producing for TV and I, I produced two shows for them and a couple of nights for them. And then they called me and they were like, do you want to go on a journey with us? Do you want to like really do this? And they, they took over our YouTube channel and helped to train us for YouTube. And we've been growing really fast on YouTube. And, you know, our podcasts are, two of our podcasts are two of the top podcasts in Christianity. Wow. And then you look at that and just go, only God, because I have, mm-hmm. you know, no foundation. I never even wanted to go after Christian media. I thought I was going to be producing movies and TV shows and stuff. And I have some of those projects in my heart and somewhere in the works behind the scenes. But what I saw is that the average person in this season, especially after coronavirus, is operating, the average Christian is operating out of so much heaviness because we're not focused on what God's doing. So to me, the marriage of the prophetic in the Christian media world is needed because Christians who hear from God tell people this is what God's doing. That's my whole life. It's like, let's focus on what God's doing. Who cares what the enemy's doing? Who cares what man's doing wrong? What is God doing? Let's look at that and camp around that and build hope. And I started to realize, like, and these, you know, especially CBN and TBN, who I'm in deep relationship with, that they didn't have some of that. They, they, they know that in their hearts, but they didn't have some of that operating in their system and so their structure. And I've just behind the scenes just been like plowing them going, but this is what God's doing. And this is, this is why this is good. And this is why this is okay. And let's celebrate when this person gets saved and baptized. Even if five years later, they walk away, let's celebrate the moment. Yes. Let's, let's connect yes. to it. So I feel like not only have I been um, able to have my media, but I've been able to be behind the scenes with people who produce and create media in the Christian world and be a great reinforcement or encouragement to them and a prophet to them, but prophet, prophetic voice to them. So it's been really an intro, that's my transition. So I hope people, when they when they're looking for positive media, that's especially social commentary, that they'll find my commentary and spend a season, even if they don't agree with each of the things I'm saying. The backbone is think for yourself, discern for yourself, connect to God's love over the situation, even if it's politics that are ugly, even if it's crime that's being exposed as corrupt, even if it's something in the entertainment industry that's insidious, like human trafficking that just got exposed at Comic-Con. Like, let's focus on what God's doing, though, over the whole issue of human trafficking and how it's being exposed in our generation and how we can actually change it in our generation. And one generation can change the whole thing. So don't just be shocked by the moment, but look for God's redemptive hand that he's going to shut something down and open something up. So I think that that's that's my passion. Yeah. Well, it's evident. It's absolutely evident. And, Sean, it's fruitful. I mean, mm-hmm. God, you you j- just have the Holy Spirit has accelerated you and launched you into some tumultuous waters. A lot of people would be intimidated by very shark infested. And yet you come in with this confidence, this humility, this grace, this poise. Um, talk about that. I mean, the doors are gone <laughs> opening and, and, and the way your podcasts are up there with secular and 
and you know just areas you never thought that got that you would be able to shine the light of Jesus in because they tend to be very dark. Yeah. No, it's funny because on podcasting when we had some news media outlets call us and I'm I'm in muckrag now as a as a um, journalist, which is really funny because I'm not a trained journalist at all, but I have been being mentored by some people who are, you know, trained people in journalism. But it's so wild to watch. Like my name was with Anderson Cooper and Dr. Phil for like three weeks and they're in the podcast thing. And I'm still in the top hundred every week when our podcast comes out, which is wild for social commentary. And the news commentary made it to number 26 at one point, which no one who doesn't have a marketing machine behind him has ever made. I mean, I was like, that was new, you know, maybe Daily Wire or something. And, and so I remember when that was happening and I was, I was laughing, just going, this is so bizarre that there's, and I have a small following. I mean, it's like my YouTube channel is only 140,000 people. It's not like a, our, our podcast subscription base is 28,000 people or something. It's not like this huge 300,000, 5 million people are following us, but some of our clips because it goes so viral end up being in the millions, you know, views. And I remember watching that just going, God, what are you doing? I'm so like, them talk about imposter syndrome. Like these people are trained and they've spent their whole life, especially when it comes to politics in this world. And I'm coming in with just a prophetic insight or just a perspective that yeah. maybe no one else has gotten. And one of the news programs I'm regularly on, they said, you know, you're one of our um, Mount Rushmore's uh, figures on our news program, because when we call you, you, there's nothing that you say that's like anybody else we can call in the whole world. You're such a unique perspective and it rebalances or balances out so many other things. And it was one of the highest compliments. And that's when, you know, like you're in your lane that God's brought you into because I cannot manufacture this and you can't make this up. Like it just either God's with you or he's not with you in these, yeah. in these opportunities. And I, what I'm seeing though, and I say this about myself because I'm seeing other people who they know they're called to ministry. They know they're called to be a voice, but they're not called on traditional, maybe a platform of a church or they're not called to just be a news anchor on a news, but there's this middle ground. And I've been watching it happen, especially on YouTube and TikTok where there's all these Christian voices that are emerging that have millions of followers, millions of followers. Yeah. And it's because they have a unique voice to speak to culture right now. And so I feel like I've been giving people courage for a long time for that. I go to a group in Hollywood that they have 150 million followers between the 26 of them that, that meet in a Bible study and their models and influencers and some are, do Bible studies and stuff online. And I, I, I'll mentor or meet with them or whatever and just look at them and just go, you would never fit as a local pastor. You just couldn't because of just your life. Yeah. It wouldn't make sense. But you are completely in your lane. This is so perfect what you're doing right now. And I've found that. And I love that I found that. I love that I found like, and we're just building on that platform of social commentary and, and creating conversations. I call it creating conversations. It's I'm creating conversations for what God's doing in the world. And we do it with Hollywood. We do it with all these places. And I, what I'm finding is that these conversations aren't happening in a lot of other places. So I'm proud that we get to do this, not proud and not spirit of pride, but like, I'm like, God, as a son, I feel like you're with us. I'm so, yes. I'm so glad I get to do this with you. This is so good. It's fun. Being in the will of God is fun, right? Yeah. And then it, the hard stuff just kind of bounces off or it just, it goes away quick. <laughs> It does. And and of course, it's not that you're denying that the enemy doesn't attack and he's not out there and we're not in a very difficult time yeah, in history and with our culture and our children and the things that are being shoved down our throat and the lukewarmness and all of that. But I so appreciate your perspective that, OK, let's find the hope in it. Let's find the love in it. Let's, you know, find the faith in it. Let's find the redemptive value in it, because that's what Jesus would do. That's what he needs us to do. Yeah, he came in such a dark time and he he was like a social commentator. He told them what was about to happen. He told them where their faith should be. He told them to ignore certain politics in certain places that they didn't need to focus on. And so he did such a good job in culture in a really dark time of setting their faith. And I'm just like, I, I look at that as my example all the time. I've, I've reread the scripture so many times just going, you've done this. You've done this. Like you've been like an anchor on a, on a TV show telling people how to perceive. It's so crazy. Well, you're, you are living the promise and the principle and the word that your gift makes room for you, that when you're faithful in the little, he'll make you ruler over much. And he can <laughs> trust least you. Likely. Well, he can trust you. He knows if I put him out there, he's going to open his mouth and he's going to talk about me. He's going to prophesy. He, you know, you have nothing to lose because you're not trying to get in the game. You're just trying to yeah. stay in your God game. Yeah. And so, I mean, and, and you have to realize like in those spaces we're at, people like Tucker Carlson are saying, I've heard from God and God showed me this. People like 
Joe Rogan is so close to, he's been so around so many Christians over the last two years who've been defining things to him and they've been on a show or someone like um, Russell Brand, who just recently came to Jesus, who was so spiritual and so, was so on a quest, but found the answer in Jesus. So it's not like I'm in a space where um, what I would be saying would be adversarial in the stream that we're in. It's actually people are so hungry right now for the contrast between because evil is so evil. They want to see God is so real and powerful. And so I think when you say God is powerful and here's how you can interpret the scriptures for now. And here's some of the ways you can think about it now. I think people are, I don't, I'm sure, I'm sure people are watching. You're hungry for that. Like you're, you're like, what are you doing, God? You know? And I think that, you know, watching these guys that are out there that are just using their, I mean, Charlie Kirk using their platform of faith. And there's so many good people who are doing it. Even Candace Owens, I know she's right now controversial this week, but she's really loves Jesus, you know, loves Jesus. And so I, I, I believe there'll be a rebalance and I'm, Sad about the anti-Israel. Me know, too. But we're praying like, for her. We're praying. Yeah, and there's a lot of people who have some things that we're not going to agree with, but there's yeah. a core there that you go, okay, God's going to use that, and yeah. He's going to use that core. So there's people that are out there that are using. They've taken some big stands and steps, and they've been on the front page of New York Times for being evil because they've taken those stands. So I feel like what I've done, I've had some persecution. We've had some marginalization, especially from big tech, but I and I've had some really bad reports about me in newspapers. But it hasn't been like I haven't paid the price that someone like even like Vince Shapiro has paid, you know, who's Jewish, not not a believer, but he's like close, you know. And so I look at it and just go, I, I God, I'll pay any price for mm -hmm. Jesus to be seen in our generation. But I want to have wisdom, so I'm not I'm not putting myself in the line of fire, you know. In yeah. the midst of it. Well, one thing I so enjoy is is when something big goes on in the world. I know that probably within 24 hours to five to seven days, you're going to address it. You know, so if it's stuff in Paris, if it's stuff with the elections, and the other thing I I so appreciate about you is that you also help parents share how they can break it down for their children, and that's helpful because you know, our children are being inundated and you have such a gift, you have materials, Spanish and English, but then you have materials that you're training little prophets. You're training little guys to hear the voice of God too. Yeah, I mean, our book, Growing Up With God, it, it's so funny because it came out at a time where a lot of parents didn't have tools for hearing God's voice for their kids. I wanted to write a chapter book and the chapter book's super simple, but it was based on two true stories. So sometimes people go, oh, you put the black kid who's a foster kid. I'm like, actually it was based on a true story from a kid named Lucas. And then also the story about that little Hispanic girl who's an actress was based on a true story. So both of them are based on true stories, but it ended up being like this phenomenon where tens of thousands of kids have gone through this. And it's kids who are much older than the book series is for a lot of teenagers have gone through it, which is so funny to me because it's like written for like a nine year old, you know, yeah. but people just needed a story to show them like what it's like. But the core of that, I think when we see a story, it can change the whole way we view a subject. So hearing God's voice could be like, why do I really need that? But then when you see little Maria, who's like, she has a prophecy or promise that she's going to be an actress, but then starts to violate the people she's going to be an actress with. And like one little girl gets sick, who's better than her. And she's rejoicing that she's sick because now she's going to get the part. And that really happened to a little friend of ours. And then she ended up going, I got to pray for her. I actually go, I get, she's the one that God sent me to be an actress for. Not all the people are going to watch me. And she prays for a little girl. The little girl gets healed and gets the part. And this is a true based on a true story. And she starts to see like the value system. So I'm glad you brought it up because I do feel like in our generation, so many of the gifts have violated love the way we've expressed them as a church. Right. And so many of the preaching and the messages, even in politics or whatever, have violated the spirit of love. And it creates that imbalance of, again, us and them, which I mentioned right. earlier. So it creates like I have the truth and I'm valuable and you don't have the truth. So you're not valuable. And I look at it and go, like I watch TikTok sometimes and I'm like laughing because, you know, this conservative girl who's like, you know, there's something good for liberals who have blue hair. They make the best coffee. Stay in your lane and make coffee. You know, those kinds of things are really funny. But when you come down to it, when you're faced with a blue haired coffee barista who's probably a militant, whatever, and you look at them, is that what you see or do you see what God sees? And yeah. are they a human being? Are they someone's granddaughter who's yeah. been praying for them for years? That's are they somebody who you actually like? Is this somebody who you could actually have? Uh, friendship chemistry within your family and are you going to open your heart and love enough for and i'm not a natural evangelist like it's i'm i i don't like i'm an introvert like i don't want to talk to strangers but love compels me you know love compels me all the time mm -hmm. and so i think that like my version of what i'm doing in both te training people in a prophetic but also training people in social media and like learning how to do social commentary to see big world events it's it all comes back to who is jesus yeah and that's what i'm passionate about. Yeah. 
Well, Sean, I, I, you're fascinating. You're anointed. You are God's man right now. And I would love to talk to you forever, but um, all wonderful things come to a pause. And so I want <laughs> you uh, to pray. I just want you to pray because we have viewers that are watching right now and they're tracking with you and they're listening and they're inspired and they're, they're touched deeply. And I just want you to release a prayer, a prophetic word, whatever's on your heart. Um, yeah, to yeah, yeah. Well, I do. I'm going to pray for you. And maybe you're watching and you're not registering with what I'm saying, because maybe I talked a lot about myself and you're like, what, what is he really trying to say? Right now, the world is dark. The world is really dark. But it says in Isaiah, rise and shine for your light has come and the spirit of God is on you. And thick darkness covers the earth, but God's light's on you. And I just want to pray that maybe you don't feel shiny right now. You don't feel like God's brilliance over you and over your circumstances. Maybe you're feeling the opposite, that you're covered by the darkness. And you're covered by the hardship of the oppression that's here. And God wants to turn things around today in your perspective. And he wants to give you such a feeling of his ownership and, and his, he's never lost a battle. Do you realize that he's never lost a battle? Maybe you've lost a battle, but he hasn't. And what you've lost, Romans 8, 28 says, he'll work it for your good. So I pray over you that you would have God's eyes to see your life, that you have God's perspective and perceptions to understand what he's doing in your life right now, in your family, your children, what he's doing in your nation, wherever you're watching this from, what he's doing in your church, that everything else would start to just crumble away in your perspective, that the, the heaviness would feel like it's under your feet, and that the goodness of God and whatever's true, right, pure, and noble, that you'd be able to fix your mind, and it says in the scriptures, your affections on those things. So I pray for a prophetic, a spiritual realignment over you right now. And if you already have that, let God increase it. I pray that God would It'd be like compounded interest. It would just, your bank would be full. But if you don't have that, I pray that God would shift your spirit right now, shift your perspective. He loves you so much and he wants to use that love that's inside of you so much. So I pray that he would build inside of you a confidence in who he is and what he's doing in Jesus name. Jesus name. Sean, thank you so much. Um, I just encourage everybody go to boltsministries.com. All of you've seen it a couple times on the screen, but all of his resources are there. Um, things you can do with your life group, studies you can do. Um, we didn't even talk about your academy and how you are training champions right now. Um, but things for children. Um, you know, how you can tune into his podcast. Listen, use his podcast, send them to business people in your life. Um, send them to those that are so need to hear the prophetic, prophetic voice of God. And so listen, come home and Jen Mallon and my team are cheering for you. Uh, keep running your race. We need you out there. God's going to continue to fill your mouth as you open it. And we so appreciate you, Sean, and look forward to seeing you in the studio. Thank you for watching today. I'm Jen Mallon, and I encourage you, come home. <laughs>